Hello, everyone. This is Xuan Yuan from the University of Southern California. Thanks to the organizers for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to speak at the workshop on time series generation and anomaly detection in high dimensions. Today, I'm going to talk about a very recent work on learning to simulate tail risk scenarios. This is based on joint work with Rama, Mihai, and Chao uh, from Oxford. And the paper is available on archive and SSRN. Please check it out if you're interested. So I'll start with some motivation on what is market simulator and why we are interested in constructing a realistic market simulator. If we denote P data as the joint distribution of some price uh, dynamics over a given time period or some financial scenarios, uh, the goal for us here is to construct a model which uh, given some samples from the real data so that the model is similar to the true financial data under certain criteria. And why we are interested in constructing such a market simulator, because simulator will provide us uh, with a lot of or unlimited data and can help us to make better trading decisions, test uh, uh, back testing strategies and help us to improve the risk management. And especially um, nowadays, people are trying to explore uh, machine learning based uh, algorithms and these type of algorithms typically need more data compared to the available historical data. So we want to use those simulators to give us more data and sometimes um, there are there will be like privacy issues for uh, sharing data and for security reasons. It's very sensitive to share data, but in this case, if we have a realistic simulator, we can just share the simulator with our collaborators and to uh, work on something together. Okay. Mm, traditionally, uh, uh, the, the, mark, the market simulators are constructed uh, using parametric models. Uh, so for example, we use Garch models, diffusion and jump processes. And we also use stochastic volatility models and uh, copulas. Those models have been very successful in modeling low dimensional applications involving a small number of homogeneous, uh, homogeneous assets. However, it is quite difficult to model joint dynamics of a large or heterogeneous portfolios with assets from different um, uh, different asset groups. And this method is uh, difficult to scale up. And sometimes we may face the risk of model misspecification if we can't capture the correlation among different assets in a correct way. And another classical method is this Gaussian models with um, constant coefficients, which is also called the multivariant black shots models. So this type of models um, is very easy to implement and estimate. It is almost the default approach uh, in most of the high dimensional applications. However, these methods may amplify um, economic evidence for mismatch with stylized facts and uh, uh, such as on uh, heavy tail distributions, volatility clusterings, and uh, tail de dependence. For all these stale effects, we won't be able to observe them if we use uh, Gaussian models. Okay. So this, these uh, limitations from classical methods motivate us to consider more in the model-free direction and see whether we could construct market simulators uh, using data-driven models with fewer model assumptions. And we've seen that deep neural network-based gener generative models have been quite successful in other uh, application domains, such as image generation, test generation, and audio generation. Are we able to adapt these successes to financial applications. The benefits of these um, deep neural network-based models are that it, they are very flexible. They have a lot of computational power. It can fit better with the data we have, and it can provide a nominalization to the data sets, and it can give us 
more diversified training and testing sets for our to test various algorithms and strategies. But there are a lot of challenges at the same time. For example, we can't check the quality of the simulated time series by eye, which are often used for image generation. And we do want our uh, simulated data to be consistent with the market of uh, the real financial market in the sense that we want to have consistent stylized facts. And for financial markets, interpretability is very important. We want to make sure that the proposed method have some guaranteed uh, properties. We don't want pure black box methods. And we also know that uh, financial markets or time series in financial markets are highly non-stationary uh, and there's a very low information to noise ratio. So it's very difficult. So financial market, financial applications are quite hard to adapt to. And we want to make sure that the simulated data have um, controllable risk. And we also want uh, our generated data to have this non-anticipative property, which is observed in our real financial world. So these are the challenges we need to tackle when we consider applying these uh, new network-based method to financial applications. For the particular application of uh, generating new scenarios, for different applications, uh, we have this seminal paper by Goodfellow and his co-authors in 2004. And in this paper, they proposed a generative adversarial networks, which is, um, uh, which is uh, to use a minimax game between two um, different neural networks to simulate realistic uh, scenarios uh, for images. Okay. So they consider they, 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 they use a unsupervised uh, machine learning framework and they consider a minimax game between a gener generator network, we call this player J, and another player is called the discriminator network. So for player G, she is trying to fool player D by producing very natural looking data from a random, random latent vector Z. So our player G will map a latent vector Z to a very natural looking data, which could mimic the real data set. And player D, which is, a dis which is the discriminator, or we can call this player D the teacher, uh, teach, uh, the teacher and the discriminator want to distinguish whether this um, data is from the real data set or it is generated by our player G. And player D gets better in distinguishing between real and generated data. And uh, we want to have these flavors in the design of the generative adversarial neural networks. Okay. So this is a mathematical framework for the generative adversarial networks. And this is the objective function for both player G and player D. So we see that uh, this loss function has two parts. The first part is the expectation under the distribution of the true data for the log of the score um, by our discriminator. And the second part is the log one minus the score from the discriminator. So if the discriminator thinks uh, like data X is from the true data distribution, then the discriminator will assign score one to this data point. And if our discriminator thinks, oh, this data point is actually generated by the generator, then he will try to assign score zero, which means this is a fake, a fake picture or fake data. And uh, uh, so the goal for the discriminator is to distinguish true data from generated data, whereas for our a generator generator is trying to mimic the true data set and fool uh, this discriminator. So this is how this log function is designed so that we have this functionality, the minimum, uh, minimax game between the generator and the discriminator. And what we hope is that by 
repeatedly playing the game between discriminator and the generator, eventually we want to reach a, an equilibrium so that the generator could generate very realistic data set and the discriminator won't be able to distinguish uh, these two data set. And if we are able to do that, then we could use this generator to provide us with more and more data sets because we have unlimited access to this latent variable. So we will have a lot of new data set for us to, to, to use and test. So this is the idea between this um, seminal paper uh, which this, uh, in which this generative adversarial networks are proposed. Okay. Originally, uh, this framework is designed to generate or simulate uh, images, um, but later on, it has been applied uh, in, the in our financial domain. And from application perspective, we can modify or improve uh, the scan architecture to help us generate time series or help us to forecast time series. And this can also be combined with downstream tasks to help us uh, do portfolio optimization and detect uh, fraud on credit markets. So it's a very flexible machine learning framework and it can help us to do a lot of things in finance. Okay. And one of the paper on uh, we will going to introduce today falls into the scope of time series generation. And from the design perspective, we can modify the new network architecture in order to adapt to different, different data type and different data structure. And based on uh, the properties we are interested, we can also modify the loss function to serve a better purpose um, in order to um, take into consideration various criteria that we're interested in. And for our uh, telcom paper, uh, we modified the loss function to capture more precisely the tail risk of our distribution. So um, this is uh, due to time limits. I'll just briefly introduce uh, what are the uh, key ideas for this uh, uh, tail gun, which help us to uh, generate um, financial scenarios that have a focus on risk evaluation so that we are guaranteed the simulated data will have the consistent uh, tail risk measures compared to realistic uh, financial data sets. So for loss function design, because we are mainly interested in the tail risks for the generated scenario, so we directly put this risk measures like value at risk and expected shortfall into the design of the loss function. So we are not that interested in what happened in the middle. We care about um, risk maintained in various financial scenarios. We want those risk measures are consistent with the uh, data we observe from real financial markets. Okay, and this for uh, this uh, value at risk and expected shortfall are integrated into the loss function by utilizing the joint elicitability property uh, of this uh, statistics, and also because uh, uh, and also because we are interested in a large group of dynamic trading strategies. So we will evaluate the quality of the generated data using different kinds of dynamic trading strategies to explore the high dimensional space. And uh, so for the dynamic trading strategies, we include static portfolios, which help us to capture the cross asset dependence information. And we use dynamic strategies to capture temporal dependence information contained in financial scenarios. And in terms of the architecture design, uh, we used a, a special function called neural sorting. It helped us to um, utilize some certain invariant property from our data structure to make the whole computation more efficient. So this is a brief introduction about the architecture design. And uh, 
we denote this tail gain, we denote tail gain as the model trained with both static and dynamic trading strategies across multiple assets, as we just described here. And uh, for static uh, trading strategies, we simply look at the buy and hold strategy of certain um, portfolio combinations. And for dynamic trading strategies, we use mean reverting strategy and trend following strategy of some given portfolios. And we compare the performance of our TELGAN model with uh, two benchmark models. The first one is TELGAN with raw model, means that we only train the GAN framework with buy and host strategies, with static strategies. And uh, for a single, for individual asset, and another benchmark is the GAN framework trend with static multi-asset portfolios. So these two, uh, these two framework, uh, they, they only capture static information. And we will show that by considering dynamic information or nonlinear information along the 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 the, the uh, along the whole time series will help us to improve or um, to improve the performance. Okay. So this is a um, this is an example we have uh, when we perform the strategy uh, using some on um, uh, uh, simulated uh, scenarios. So we can see that if we uh, compare the performance of three different GAN models, they have similar uh, performance uh, when we apply them on buy and hold strategy. But once we look at the performance with some dynamic trading strategies, we realize that uh, the, those static models won't be able to simulate scenarios that can maintain the same tail risk if we apply dynamic trading strategies on those simulated data, whereas tail gun um, with this um, green uh, with this red line here have very consistent performance with the real uh, market data. So it shows that. Uh, tail gun is able to capture dynamic information contained in time series models okay? and produce a realistic uh, scenarios. Okay? And finally, I want to mention that uh, tail gun is also good, in uh, good at uh, capturing the temporal and correlation patterns. We see that uh, if we look at the correlation matrix, of uh, price increments and autocorrelation um, numbers of price increments, tail gun gave us the best performance uh, compared to the uh, statistics calculated from real financial data. So it further shows the, um, uh, the, 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 the performance or the benefit of using a tail gun framework. And another uh, comment I want to make is that uh, we also compared our tail gun framework with a um, uh, with, uh, uh, supervised learning method. And we, sh we showed that our tail gun model has better generalization property. So it uh, provides new scenarios that are realistic, but haven't been seen from historical data. So this is a benefit of using um, GAN framework. And another uh, uh, comment is that uh, tail GAN framework is easy to generalize or scale up to higher dimensions by considering on um, eigen portfolios and uh, the computational cost doesn't increase much uh, when we uh, increase the dimension of the or the number of the portfolios considered uh, in the framework. So I'll stop here and thanks for coming to my talk.